afternoon. This is Pastor Undu on um, Inspired for Greatness. You're welcome this afternoon. I'm so excited to be with you. And I believe God has a plan and a purpose for you and has a word that I believe has the power to revolutionize your life. I'm so excited and I'm, I'm, I'm so, um, so glad to come through to you uh, by the medium of television. And um, I want to encourage you um, to call your friends and tell them Pastor Undu is on air with Empowered for Success with a word that has the ability to change your life and to move you forward. So get your friends, get your colleagues, get your uh, family around um, the television and then let them give me their undivided attention for the next 28 minutes. And I believe the things I'm going to be sharing will be impactful and life-changing. Let's share a word of prayer as we go into the words. Father, we thank and bless you for today. Thank you for all our audience, uh, those in television line that are watching the live TV program now. I pray that wherever they are, that you touch them in a specific way. I pray you bring a word that will bring about a revolution in their lives. In the mighty name of Jesus. Once again, thank you so much for being uh, with me on this broadcast. This is Pastor Undu Echana from Empowerment Ministries International. We meet every Sunday from 10 to 12 for life-changing services here in the city of London at Stratford Picture House Cinema Screen for every Sunday. So welcome you to our life-changing services. Um, I want to invite you this Sunday that is coming on the, 20, um, the 24th of February. Don't miss our service. We have a dynamic service. Um, your life will be impacted. Your life will be greatly, greatly enhanced. So I look forward to seeing you in one of our live services. I want to share with you something very profound this, um, this afternoon. Um, and I want to share with you what I've tagged. Um, what do you do when you don't know what to do? At some stage at uh, this broadcast, I will be opening up the line for you to call in. Um, but I, I want to share a word with you first before I go into opening up the calls for you to call. Because I believe the word of God is the capital agency through which our lives are changed, our lives are enhanced. If you want to experience any kind of tangible, lifelong success, you need to engage the word of God. The Bible, that's why God was speaking to Joshua and he told him in Joshua chapter 1, he said, this book of the Lord shall not depart out of your mouth, but you should meditate on it day and night that, that you might observe to do according to all that is daring and then you will make your way prosperous and then you will have good success. So uh, embracing the word and, and, and living in line with the word and activating the word is the secret to a life of super success. So what do you do when you don't know what to do? Is what I want to share with you. And I want to read a, a number of verses from 2 Chronicles chapter 20. If you have your Bible, you can turn with me to 2 Chronicles chapter 20. I'll read from verses 1 to 3 and, and a number of verses. Okay, so it came to pass after this also that the children of Moab and the children of Ammon and with them others besides the Ammonites came against Joseph at battle. Then there came some that told Joseph at saying, There cometh a great multitude against thee. From beyond the sea of the, uh, on the other side, okay, on the other side of Syria, behold, they be in Hazan Tamar, which is Engeded. And Joseph had feared and set himself to seek the Lord and proclaim a fast throughout all Judah. Verse 12 And our God, will thou not judge them? For we have no might against this great company that cometh against us, neither know we what to do, but our eyes are upon ye. And he said, verse 15, Hacking ye all Judah, ye inhabitants of Jerusalem. This is the prophet speaking now. And thou, King Jehoshaphat, thus saith the Lord unto you, Be not afraid. God is saying to somebody this morning or this afternoon, Don't be afraid. Nor be dismayed by the reason of this great multitude. I don't care whatever mountain is confronting you. God is saying, don't be afraid. Okay, you are not alone. Don't be overwhelmed. God is still on your side. The chapter is not over. The case is not, is not closed. He says, don't be uh, by the reason of this great multitude. For the battle is not yours, but God's. Tomorrow go ye down against 
them, behold, they come up by the cleave of these, and ye shall find them at the end of the brook, before the wilderness of, of, of Jero. You shall not need to fight in this battle. Set yourselves, stand ye still, see the salvation of the Lord with you, O Judah and Jerusalem. Fear not, nor be dismayed. Tomorrow go out against them, for the Lord will be with you. That is God's word, I believe, for somebody this, this afternoon. The Lord will be with you, though you feel overwhelmed. The situations that are coming against you, the, the, the predicaments that you are facing, the life challenges that you are in, in the midst of it, it's overwhelming. And you are looking and saying, how am I going to deal with this? Jehoshaphat was in a very precarious situation, obviously. Ammon, uh, uh, and, and um, I've come against him. Uh, not just Ammon, uh, Moab, and the Marcia. So the three, those three um, um, enemies have, have arisen against him. I don't know what has arisen against your life, uh, um, but Jehoshaphat here was faced with a mountain they didn't understand how to deal with. Maybe you are in a place in your life and there are certain things you are, you are, that is confronting you. You don't have an explanation for them. You don't know how you will rise above them. And you are, you are, you're wondering, what do I do? And Joshua was exactly in that same spot. What do you do when you don't know what to do? What do you do when you don't know what to do? Joshua, reading down that passage in 2 Corinthians chapter 20, discovered that after the prophet spoke and told him, be still, this battle is not yours, this battle is the Lord. He, he, obviously, he obviously engaged the people, he, he spoke to the people, he motivated the people to get into a fast. And after the fast, the word came, and then he did something very unique. He set up um, a, a singers to, to praise and to magnify God. And if you read down that passage of scripture, you discover that as they began to praise God, as they began to sing and to praise and to exalt God, God set an ambushment against Moab, Ammon, and Mount Seir, and they destroyed each other. The enemies that were coming against him, to which he had no answer and no solution, and he was bewildered and overwhelmed and was afraid. By not even raising a finger, the hand of God moves in a strange dimension and eliminated all the enemies that were before him. I've come to say to somebody this afternoon, you might be overwhelmed. Maybe you are faced with life situations. Maybe life throws, you know, most of the time, life throws us questions to which we, a lot of times, we don't have answers. Maybe in the area of your finances, life throws you questions that you have no answers to. In the area of your marriage, in the area of your relationship, in the area of your project, your personal life, your spiritual life, life throws you questions that you don't have answers to. You are overwhelmed. You don't know what to do, how to go about solving the problem. You're just paralyzed by the enormity of the challenge that you have to face. Maybe you're listening to me and this is your situation. I want to say to you, take heart because God has a word for you that will take you out of that place into the place of victory that he has ordained for you. Okay, you are faced with challenges that stretches your capacity and reveals the limitation of your ability and resource. You know, that was what Joshua was faced with. He was faced with a challenge that stretched his capacity. Obviously, his capacity as a, as a king, he couldn't deal with those three different um, entities, those three different enemies. Those three battle warheads that were coming against him, he knew in his capacity he couldn't deal with them. He couldn't handle them. He didn't have the resources to match the, the attack that was coming against him. And maybe you are listening to me and that's your situation. You don't have the resources, the capacity to deal with the challenges that is coming your direction. And you are feeling overwhelmed. You're feeling pressed on every side. Joseph was faced with hell and he went through high waters and had no human answer. But there was something interesting that Joseph did that I want to share with you that might be an insight on what to do when you don't know what to do. Joseph took some crucial steps and I will enumerate them, enumerate them very quickly. And in a short while, we'll be able to open the line uh, uh, in a little while. 
what did Jehoshaphat do? The first thing was that he took, he expressed his vulnerability. He knew he was vulnerable. He knew he was not, he was not a superman. He was a king, but he knew he was vulnerable. Sometimes we are faced with situations and we need to just be uh, candid enough to express our vulnerability. We feel vulnerable. We feel empty. We feel exposed. We feel, um, uh, 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 um, we feel insecure based on the threats that is confronting us. That was what Joshua was expressing his vulnerability to God. How am I going to deal with this three different army that is coming against me? I don't know what to do. We don't have any strength against them. We are clueless how to deal with this opposition. Are you faced with certain problems in your life and you are completely clueless how to overcome those problems? You are in safe company if you have felt that way. I've been in situations in myself sometimes where I feel overwhelmed and it looks like the situation is over my head. But listen, when you are down to nothing, God is up to something. I know you might feel stretched and your resources depleted. Yes, you might feel vulnerable. He expressed his vulnerability. The second thing was that he was honest about the depth of his resources. He knew he was a king, but he knew his resources could not match the opposition. He knew his resources could not match the opposition. He was honest about his resources. What are your resources? What, what have you been relying on? What are your strengths? That sometimes gives you a sense of confidence. But you need to be honest about the depth of your resources. Do you have the capacity to solve the problems that are facing you? Or, honestly speaking, you know if God will not intervene or does not intervene in the situation that you are faced, you will be defeated face, I mean, you will be face down, you will be overwhelmed, and you will be, you'll be incapacitated with that situation. He was honest about his resources. The third thing he did was he sought the Lord's face, the ultimate source. He sought God's help. He says, I will, he, say, he, say he sought God. He, he began to seek God and he engaged also. The fourth thing was he, he fasted. He engaged the ministry of fasting. He humbled himself and, and cut off the supply of natural food so that he can engage in supernatural, supernatural food for his spirit. He, he sought the face of God. He then fasted and he engaged the rest of the, of, the, of, the, of, the, of the tribe of Judah to fast with him. Why? Because he knew he needed the help of heaven. He needed the intervention of heaven. If somebody listen to me. You need the intervention of heaven and you are overwhelmed. But listen, you need to go back to God in prayer. You need to go back and engage the ministry of fasting, the, 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 the mystery and the, and the instrument of fasting. Humble yourself, shut out natural food so that your spirit man can engage with God and you can receive a download from heaven of what you need to deal with the situation that is overwhelming. What do you do when you don't know what to do? You can do certain things and explore the, the avenues before you and then wait for God's power to kick in. The fifth thing was he prayed earnestly and passionately. He began to bring his case before God in prayer and began to bring a strong reason before God. He says, God, you said if your people who are called by your name, if they prayed, if they called on you in this house, Yes, you will, you will look to their presence. You will look in their direction. And you will turn and you will, you will visit their enemies. He began to bring his strong case before God. Earnest prayer. He began to pray. He began to pray. And as they finished praying, the sixth thing they did was they were still. So that they could hear the voice of God. They could get direction. He was still for the voice and for the direction of God. What do you do when you don't know what to do? Be still. The Bible says, be still and know that I am God. Be still. And there was a prophetic direction on how to overcome this mountain that was facing him. Listen, when you engage the ministry of fasting, you engage the ministry of prayer. And then after you have prayed, you have engaged in spiritual exercise. You need to be still 
You need to calm your spirit man down so that you can tune your spirit to the frequency of heaven and hear a voice, a direction. You need to know what is God saying about that situation that you are faced with. There is a way out. There is a way up. There is a way into the place of victory. But you need a still spirit to hear the voice of God. That's what Jehoshaphat did and the people, they were still. And as they were still, the prophet spoke. The prophet said, tomorrow you will go against them. They are going to come from seas, but you don't have to fight in this battle because this battle is the Lord. The battle is not yours. The battle is the Lord's. So he received direction through the stillness of his voice. Listen, you might be feeling overwhelmed, but what do you do when you don't know what to do? Be still before God's presence. He will give you direction on what next step to take. Your mountain is trying to paralyze your hope and kill your expectation. Listen, you must remain a prisoner of hope. And that's why you need to be still to receive a direction from God on how to overcome this challenge that you are faced with. I don't know whether the challenge is a challenge of sickness, the challenge of financial hardship, or paralysis in your business, or in your job, you're out of work, or you've been single for a long season. Or spiritually, you feel, you feel empty. You feel depleted. Listen to me. Job almost lost everything. Okay? He was faced with every form of storm. Job lost all his sons, all his daughters, 10 children in one day. Lost all his cattle, all his sheep. All his resources seemed to have gone. Almost every resource he had, had gone. What do you do when you don't know what else to do? His body was ravaged with sickness. What do you do when you don't know what else to do? When you are righteous, you're walking in line with God's will and all hell breaks loose. Listen, your resources might look like it's depleted, but your resources might have gone. But God is your ultimate source and he can, re, he can re bring to life again your depleted resource. God is your source. Though your resources look like it's been challenged and, and it looks like it's disappearing, God is able to resurrect your, your source once again. What happened to Job was that at the end of his journey, the Bible says God gave him back twice as much as he had in the beginning. Why? Because God is your source. Listen, so the, the enemy might want to attack your resources. Attack your mind, attack your health, attack your finances, attack your family. Yes, he might want to attack your, that which is your resource. But listen, he cannot attack your source. He cannot destroy your source. God is your source. Yes, your resources might look like it's gone and you don't know how to deal with getting your resource back. But don't lose heart because God is your source and he can bring back your resources. Because the devil cannot destroy your source. If your source is intact, your resources will come back. I decree over somebody's life whose resources have been depleted. God will bring about a resurrection of your source. A, a resurrection of your resources. Listen, the Bible says in book of Job chapter 7, chapter 14, verse 7 to 9. It says, for there is hope of a tree if it be cut down that it will sprout again. Yes, is there something dead in your life? Is there something that looks like it's, the enemy has attacked and it looks like that resource is gone? Listen to me, there's hope for you. The Bible says there is hope for a tree if it be cut down that it will sprout again and the tender branch thereof will not cease. Though the root thereof wax old in the earth and the stock thereof die in the ground, yet through the scent of water it will bud and bring forth balls like a plant. I've come to prophesy over somebody's life. Listen. That tree that looks like it's cut down. That situation in your life that looks like it's cut down. That resource that looks like it's disappeared. God will bring about a resurrection of that resource. It's going to come back again because there is life in the root of that tree. The tree has been cut down. Yes, I know. But that tree is going to come back to life. Why? Because there is life in the root. As long as there is life in the root at the scent of water, that tree will come back to life. Your health will come back. Your finances will come back. Your children will come back on track. Your resources, your business will be resurrected. I've come to say to somebody, what do you do when you don't know what to do? Don't complain. Don't cry. Don't feel sorry for yourself. Don't become angry. Don't become bitter. Just 
begin to praise God. That's what Jehoshaphat did. As they began to praise God, praise creates a confusion in the camp of the enemy. As you begin to praise God and to lift up the name of Jesus, I see a change come your direction. Monica, you're on the line. What's your, what's your prayer request or your, uh, or your comment very quickly? God bless you. Uh, God. My prayer request is God to resurrect my tree and everything I have died in my life. Father, I declare over the life of Monica everything that has died in her life, resurrect by your power. I speak to the root of her life. Let by the power of the scent of water, let that root begin to bring forth fruit in the name of Jesus. I cause every spirit of paralysis in your life and I command movement forward for you in the name of Jesus Christ. It is well with you. Text the number on the screen, 0794-7680-725. Everyone who is listening to me, and you don't know what to do. You have done what all you know you need to do, but it seems as if there is a brick wall before you. I want to say to you, text the number, 0794-7680-725. Text me your full email address, your full name, and tell me exactly that situation that you are confused about. That you don't know what to do to change. Text me your full email address, your full name to that number 07947-680-725. I will be calling you after this broadcast, which will be finishing in about five minutes. Text me that text me right now. Go on and check your mobile number. What I'll be doing, if you text that detail to me, I will be sending you an a, a, a message called 17 Strategies to destroy stagnation and to break free, okay? I'll be sending you that audio. It's a 23 minutes audio. You need to text me your full email address, your full name, and I will send that to you. Elizabeth calling from France. Elizabeth from France. Okay, I think we lost Elizabeth. Okay, so text me 07947680725. Text me. You are overwhelmed. You don't know what to do. Text that number. Or go to my website, www.pastorundu.com and type in your email address, your name, and your mobile number and you can get that 23 minutes audio on 17 causes of stagnation and how to break out of it. Okay? Do that right now. Text that number. Elizabeth on the line. Elizabeth on the line. Good morning, sir. Good morning. God bless you. How are you? I'm fine. Yes. How can I help? Please, I want you to pray for me concerning the fruit of the womb. The fruit of the womb. Okay. Yes. Father, in the name of Jesus, I decree over the life of Elizabeth. As you visited Elizabeth in the scriptures, Amen. after years of barrenness, I curse that spirit of barrenness Amen. and I say, receive the fruit of the womb now. Ooh. I decree in the name of Jesus that shame and reproach is rolled away from you. Receive it now. In the mighty name of Jesus. As I was praying for you, Elizabeth, the Spirit of God said, sow a seed into the life of your pastor. Okay? And I believe something is going to be breaking forth in your life. In Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you. Text that number. Text my number. 07947680725. Text me your full name, your email address. Okay? I want to send you that free email. Download 17 Cost of Stagnation and how to break out of it. Listen. Your, your, your day of change has come. Every season of stress and stagnation is over. I want to encourage you, don't make sure you don't miss our service this Sunday at the um, Picture House Cinema Screen 4. We meet there every Sunday from 10 to 12, life-changing world. Listen, if you have been blessed by this broadcast, our services are 100 times more anointed and powerful. Our life services are life-changing. Listen, come join us at the service, okay? It's in the city of London at Stratford. It's about two minutes walk from Stratford Station. Listen, if you have been going around and around in circle, you lack direction, you don't know what to do, you're overwhelmed with your life, or you're looking to fulfill your purpose, you're looking to find meaning to your life, listen, I want to pastor you, I want to help you. I believe that God has put something in my spirit that can help you take you to your life, to your, to your new level, to a whole new season in your life. I want to help pilot your life to the next season of breakthrough. The, the next season of, of release and purpose and fulfillment. 
Listen, you were born with greatness. You were not created to crawl through life. You're not created to be grounded. You're not created to, to be a beggar through life. You were created a celebrity in, in Christ Jesus. The Bible says, if God be for us, who can be against us? There is something you are pregnant with. It is called greatness. I want to help you release it. Okay? Join us this Sunday, the 24th, for a life-changing encounter in the presence of God. I am, I'm looking forward to seeing you at our service. Listen, listen, it's a new day and God is set to do something phenomenal in your life. I am so super excited about your, or, or, about your tomorrow. And if you are listening to me and you're not born again, Jesus loves you. Give your heart to him today and he will turn your life around. I will be with you the same time on Tuesday with another word that I believe will have a life-changing impact on your life. Okay, God bless you. And make today a productive day. Jesus Christ is Lord. God bless you and be victorious today. This is Pastor Undu saying, God bless you and have a great day.